Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Delighted to be here. He almost finished my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you the story of Orcam. You know, great things happen by, by chance. Sometimes it's a result of circumstances. This is what happened to us in Orcam. My partner, Professor Arnold Shashua, who is one of the leading scientists in the world, and by the way, genius, walked into my room in 2010 <coughs> and said, you know, the technology is finally mature enough. And I said, mature enough for what? And then he told me the story. There's an echo with the, with the microphone. Then he told me the story that when he graduated his PhD 30 years ago, his aunt congratulated him and said, well, now you're a doctor, you can fix my poor vision. He smiled and said, yes, but I'm not this kind of doctor. Although he moved on, but he never forgot this episode. And only in 2010, it was the first time that the algorithms became sophisticated enough, the hardware became very powerful and strong, and we felt that we can assist people on a human level, which is not trivial. And by telling the story of Orcam, also you can witness how artificial intelligence has potential to empower people and to benefit humanity on a big scale. And this is what I believe we did. We developed this tiny fellow. This is our Orcam My2, and I'm actually launching it now in Britain. It's a camera on one side, a tiny <coughs> speaker on the other side, and we located it in a very strategic place on the face, which is on the arm of any pair of eyeglasses, like this. So this is it. And the device talks to you. It's kind of assistant that goes with you during the day. So before I start to talk about what we do, I want to show you a day in the life of Amy, one of our customers. It's a new day. The sun rises. The city is waking up. The streets come alive. And so does Amy. Amy, like all of us, doesn't like to get up. But she brushes her teeth, gets ready, and heads out to start her day. On Amy's way to the coffee shop, she stops at the bookstore. Greater than myself. And realizes she has to run. Time is 8.15 a.m. 10 Park Street. Believe in your selfie. At the coffee shop, Amy gets comfortable. Hot beverages. She orders coffee and a snack. Then she meets Mike. Mike. And Ellie. Ellie. And someone new. A young man is in front of you. Cute. But Amy, you came to the coffee shop to get some work done. After finishing some work, Amy stops at the grocery store. Cereal. Honey bunches. Milk. Soy milk. And dill pickles. Pickles? Now maybe a quick stop at her favorite shop for a little something, because you deserve it. Dark blue. Pink. $100. What? Shh. Amy finally arrives back home. Now she can relax. Take off her glasses, sit down, and have a drink. Ouch. We did it kind of light, but this is a fortunate position of 350 million people in the world, which has visually impaired and blind people. 
Visually impaired is people that cannot see anymore, that glasses cannot correct. The microphone is not good, maybe we'll replace it to something else. Yeah. So what we did, we tried to help visually impaired blind people through all the day. So when I say through all the day, when you wake up in the morning, you want to match your clothing. Some of them, or most of them, don't recognize colors anymore. So they don't want to look ridiculous. So as you have seen, with the pointing finger, she can tell what is the color of, of the clothing. Then when you're outside, you want orientation. Orientation will read the street signs. When you're looking for your shop or you're looking for the bus, we'll tell you what is the bus number or train number. Then when you're in front of your shop, we'll tell you what is the name on the shop. While shopping, millions of products that we can identify and recognize. And at the cashier, we'll help you with the money notes, credit cards. Most of them tell us that they are cheated. That they give $100 and Let's say the people tell them, no, you gave me just 50, and these kind of things. And, of course, big part of our life is socializing, is to recognize people around us. So we identify faces, which is a very short process, five seconds. You can identify your friends, your, your close family, so you know all the people that are around you. But m maybe the biggest part of what we did is reading. This is, first of all, reading device. And by the way, reading was not so intuitive for us when we started. When we started, we interviewed hundreds of potential users to try to understand what is their needs. I thought, by the way, that being independent will be the most important thing. Just to be capable to get out, to do whatever you want. And I was surprised that more than 90% of our potential customers said Please give us back capability to read. It was so unintuitive to me that I did kind of small experiment on myself. I prevented myself from reading for one day. After one hour, I understood why it's so important. I suggested to do it five minutes, not more. All our world is written material. And we read everything. Digital, printed, on smartphone, on, on computer, everything. So if it's reading device, we can help to additional population, which is dyslectic people. 10 to 15 percent of the population are dyslectic, but only 3 to 5 of them are severe dyslexia. It means that they have difficulties to read. And we see more and more people that are interested in Orcam just for reading. But then there's disorders like aphasia, close to 30 million people actually cannot connect letters, they cannot read. Completely normal, they smart, everything, but cannot read. And maybe the biggest segment that we discovered is senior citizens. People that still can read, but get tired very quickly. After 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they get tired. So with our system, they can continue to read. And this is really big, big market for us. All professionals that read a lot during the day, like lawyers, doctors, students. So if we combine all of these populations together that can use our technology, it's more than a billion people. So this is exciting to have technology that, as I said, helps to humanity and in a big scale, really in a big scale. But in order to fully understand how moving it is and what impact it does, I want to show you a short video clip of Mauricio. One day, we hear a knock in the door. It was Marisa from Brazil. She said, I heard about the development. I'm not leaving Israel without having a device. And we told her, yes, but it's still under development. It's not ready. She said, no, I'm not leaving, even if it's a better site. So we actually showed her the product. And one of the engineers took a smartphone and just took a video. You should look at this. Fantastic! <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. 
dólares. 50 dólares. Certo? 50, né? 50. Yes. The wall is verde, yeah. green. All green. And I put uh, mark color. Yellow, green, uh, orange. Different notes. <laughs> Another example is a professional lawyer that uses our system in order to continue to work. Two weekends ago, I sat down and read the uh, New York Times. I haven't done that in maybe 30 years. My wife came down, I had a cup of coffee, I'm reading the New York Times, and she was crying. Just being able to read again is emotional for Howard Terman. He started losing his vision as a child. His new glasses don't fix his eyes, but they do the next best thing. Put on my glasses, it recognizes the finger, snaps the picture. Now it just reads. The glasses have a camera that recognizes text and can read the world to him. Oh, here. The technology is called OrCam, and Tourman says it gives him a sense of normalcy. Even finding out that Dunkin' Donuts has a donut I never tried uh, was exciting. Dunkin' Donuts. Even now, Tourman says it's a game changer. Picture a kid the first time he got his favorite toy. Just the best thing that has happened to me in a long time. So it's a good example of of uh, the kind of experience that our customers get. Most of them start to cry when they get the device. And when we talk about the device, what is unique? It's very light, 22 grams. Works offline, but real time, which means we don't need internet connection. We don't use cloud services. And therefore, it can work everywhere and keeps full privacy of our customers, which is a big issue today. And even in darkness, we can read because we have two LEDs that we already embedded inside. And although it's a very sophisticated product, the challenging part is the human-machine interface. We gave a lot of thought how to do it intuitively. And we found one button operation. And the one button operation is our finger. So whenever we show the pointing finger, the system understands that the user wants to understand what is in front and then starts to work. So you hold the document, I will show it to you in a moment. I just point the with the finger and it starts to work. Otherwise it's nuisance. Otherwise it talks to you too much. It became really nuisance to you. And the human machine interface is very important. Our next generation, which I believe will launch this year, is going to be even more sophisticated. We will talk to the device. So we already embedded microphone inside this version. And for example, you will hold the document and you will ask the device, what is this? Orcam will tell you this is your phone bill. What is the total? Till $200. Please pay it. That's it. Or you hold a newspaper. Read me the headlines. So it will read you all the headlines. Then it will tell you, please read me the article about this and this. Or menu at the restaurant. You don't want to read all the menu from the beginning to the end. You can ask what kind of salads they have, what kind of meat they have, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's endless. So this is kind of addition to the human machine interface, which is crucial that people can use it in a very natural and intuitive way. So everybody can show PowerPoints. I want to demonstrate it. So as I said, we just put it on the glasses. I took the brochure from this event and I want to show you the first paragraph. So the only thing I should do Let me do it again. Israel 
Wireless Connector, nurturing the dynamic growth of... We are the UK's Israel Business Connector, nurturing the dynamic growth of business and investment between the two countries. UK's Israel Business is a bilateral chamber of commerce for the digital age, connecting the online and it will continue to read to stop it i just to show my full fingers to identify face five seconds you can identify face etc etc what you have just seen it's not so trivial to see document or newspaper we analyze first what is the paragraphs where's the articles because when you start one article you want to continue the same article you know to jump from one article to another so it's a very sophisticated system behind the behind the scene, you know, to make it human and very intuitive. We work in 32 countries, where UK was the first launched two years ago, with our first version. It was USA and UK simultaneously. And we have 19 languages. I think we covered more than 90% of the world. We're just struggling now with the Japanese, which became very difficult because they write horizontally and suddenly vertical so it's confused the system completely it took us quite a long way to to find the way to deal with the japanese but we finally finished the korean and the Jap and the chinese and we're about to launch also our our um, uh, japanese version so i opened my presentation with the realization that artificial intelligence can empower people and benefit humanity both of the companies that my partner, Professor Shashua, and I founded are a great example of how artificial intelligence can really help humanity. In Mobili, we have the potential to save millions of lives and hundreds of millions of injuries due to current accidents. And with Orcam, as you have seen, we can empower and really to improve lives of more than a billion people. So definitely on a personal level, I feel privileged that I have this opportunity for the second time in my life to influence lives of so many people. Thank you very much.